My number nine best chess game of the 1970s is Katig vs. Mills. This game has been called the greatest amateur chess game of all time for a very good reason. Both of the players in this game are 1,500 players. The game was played in an open tournament in San Francisco in 1974, and Mills won the brilliancy prize ahead of many grandmasters. Prior to this game, he had been studying the great book, The Art of Attack in Chess by the master Vladimir Vukovic, and he puts many of the brilliant ideas in the book into practice. The game serves as an inspiration to players of every level that when the right moment occurs and when the right inspiration is there, any player can play a masterpiece. Mills elects to meet pawn to e4 with c5, the Sicilian defense. Now he further selects specifically the accelerated dragon variation in the Sicilian defense. That is the move g6 at an early stage without having played pawn to d6. The big idea of the accelerated dragon is to achieve the break pawn to d5 in one move instead of two, not playing d6 and d5. If you can do this, you'll be doing very, very well on the black side of the board. Now, there's some interesting context to this game. Mills has a coach. It is international master Jeremy Silman, a great and famous coach and author. Now, Silman did a lot to popularize this game after it was played. He did an article in Chess Life right after and long after the game was played. He did an article in Chess.com as well. He is also the author of a book on the Accelerated Dragon with Magnus Carlsen's coach and trainer, Peter Heinen Nielsen. It is a classic work on the opening. So we can trust that Silman has taught Mills the ways of the Accelerated Dragon. Now, if White wants to take the idea of d5 off of the table, then the right way to play here is pawn to c4 with the Moroxy bind. I think this is the preferred method for many grandmasters today. However, a lot of white players, especially amateur white players, prefer the open Sicilian and don't like to change the structure in this way. So in this game, we see Katik play the move knight to c3. This is a reasonable move, although it's probably not best. And again, you have to be very, very careful of a lot of traps for black, especially the break pawn to d5. So after knight c3, we see bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, bishop e2, castles. And in this position, it is time to worry about the break d5. The way to do that is probably knight to b3. Now, I don't think white has a lot of advantage here. This is not the most effective way for white to play, but with d5 off of the table, white should at least be doing reasonably well here. Instead, after queen d2, it is time and black does break with pawn to d5. Now, black is already at least equal probably a bit better, and it feels like black's advantage is even more significant than that. When you're playing the black pieces and your opening works out in great style, and suddenly you're at least equal, maybe better, then there's a lot of pressure on white, right? When you start off with black, you're a little bit worse, but you know what you're doing, and you have a plan of action to deal with the fact that you're down a move. When the game turns against white and the trend is against him, it's often difficult to adjust and mistakes typically follow. In this position, probably best was a capture on d5, although I don't like the white position. It's probably not too bad for white. Instead though, white flinches and captures on c6. After pawn takes c6, black already has a much, much better center always a risk for white in the Sicilian defense. If you allow a break, your opponent's center really gets moving and your spatial advantage is totally gone. Katig plays the move pawn to e5, but this just pushes the knight to an even better square. It hops to g4 and there is, yes, the idea of capturing on e5, but there is possibly an even more potent idea. It is to capture the dark squared bishop. This is positionally an unacceptable outcome for white. It would leave this bishop unopposed. Therefore, in a bad position, white does the correct thing. Bishop takes g4, giving up the light squared bishop instead of the dark squared bishop for the knight. However, just because you do the right thing, if you're in a bad position, you are still going to be in a bad position after the correct decision. In this case, black has the bishop pair and a very strong center. This is the kind of position that I and other dragon players just dream about. So after bishop takes g4, we see h3 pushing the bishop around, bishop f5, g4 pushing the bishop around further, and in this position, white has an interesting move. It is bishop takes e5, sacrificing the piece on f5 temporarily, 
to gain d4, a fork that wins material back with a very strong position. However, personally, I like the position that black gets in the game so much that I don't even want to go for this computer continuation. I want to keep the bishop pair and keep playing. Bishop e6 is played. At this point, white must defend the pawn on e5. Losing that would mean that you are just crushed in the middle of the board and the floodgates are opening for the bishops and for the black center to advance. So there are a few ways to defend that pawn, but the only good way to defend that pawn is the move pawn to f4. Now, after pawn to f6, I still love the black position, but I don't think that this position is winning yet. There's a lot of game left to be played. However, instead, it's the move queen to d4 that is played, and this move definitely invites black to continue attacking this and to gain time with further attacks on the queen later. So after queen d4, we immediately get f6. It is absolutely the natural move in this position, and black is doing really, really well. There is another very nice idea that is even stronger. It is the move queen to b8, a very specific tactical move that attacks b2 and e5, and is basically just winning on the spot. So after queen d4 and pawn to f6, here we see the move pawn to f4. There's not really a good move, but again, taking on f6 was probably better than this because as the lines are opening, you don't need to be in a position where you're opening your king up further while it's still on e1. So here after f4, we get queen c7, building the pressure here. Great decision from black. Pawn takes f6, bishop takes f6. And this is not good no matter what, but it would be better to have the pawn back on f2. Queen c5 is played, and now there are multiple good options. One that is very strong is the break pawn to d4. This forks the bishop and the knight, and after bishop takes d4, queen takes f4 is honestly just winning. The black queen is cutting off the king so it cannot castle in either direction, and the attack should finish the game off very soon. However, black's move in the game is straightforward and also very good, bishop h4 check. Now, you can't play bishop f2 without giving up the pawn on f4, which is too much to lose, so the king is headed on a journey. King to e2 is played, no other king move is really any better, and this is a great moment to pause your video and try to play like a 1500 player. What does black play in this position? Mills plays the excellent move bishop to c8. It is always difficult to find a retreating move, and this one is an excellent one. I think the two exclamation marks are very well deserved. Silman, in his notes to this game, says that this move is actually not seen by computers, but computers are getting stronger every day, and now the computer does think this is the best move, the latest version of Stockfish anyway, which is impressive. It is validating Mill's strong attacking instincts. Now, of course, the bishop retreat has the idea of bishop a6 check. The bishop is simply a more effective attacker on a6 than on e6, but the other idea is also to free the e-pawn to advance, which will blast open the middle of the board and bring a huge attack to bear against the white king. So after this excellent move bishop to c8, we see white take advantage of what is a perceived opportunity. Knight takes d5. Because the c-pawn is pinned, white is able to play this, but the position is not so desirable after this knight takes d5 move. The attack is getting out of control. Bishop a6 check, pawn to c4 to block this attack, and the excellent move queen to b7 with two huge threats. Pawn takes d5 and queen takes b2 with check. There is one move that defends both of those threats. It is the awkward knight to b4. It is the best move and white does play it. Now, a beautiful move and the very, very best move in the position, Mills plays pawn to e5, striking and strong. Now, a couple of points here. First off, queen takes is not possible because it will hang the knight on b4. Also, if pawn takes, this bishop can fall back to e7, a square freed by the advance of the knight, and now the knight on b4 also falls a second time. As a result, after e5, the best move is probably what white tries, which is knight takes a6. After knight takes a6, Mills has no intentions of taking back. He's on the attacking train, and he's going to keep attacking for as long as he can. 
Now, in this position, ignoring the knight here on a6 and simply capturing on b2 is the strongest move, but there are other excellent moves, and Mills picks the second best move. Pawn takes f4, opening the e-file, and of course there's still the idea of capturing on b2, and the bishop on e3 is now under attack. So after pawn takes f4, bishop d4 is played, moving the bishop and defending b2, which makes a lot of sense. The attack continues, rook a to e8 with check. Even stronger was f3, even stronger was queen takes a6, but this is very good, especially when you follow up with the right move in this position. After king f3, again, if you want to pause your video and try to play like a 1500, you can do so. Mills plays the move. Rook to e3 check. Boom! This move is beautiful. Mills is just on fire in this game. Now, if white accepts the rook sacrifice, the king is subject to a huge attack. Bishop takes, pawn takes, discovered check. The best move here is actually to give up the queen, but of course, that's not very appealing. If the king tries to run, there's always queen takes b2 and introductions of the rook. For example, after king e4, the most precise is to throw some rook checks just so that white can't sacrifice the queen later. And after a few rook checks, you can capture here on b2. And this is just overwhelming. There's no way for white to hold it together. Even with an extra piece, the king is too exposed. So after rook e3 check, we see king g2. And now f3 check and king back to f1. The king is trying to hide here, and of course, one suspects that he's not going to be able to hide here for long. But still, in this position, white is up a piece, and the rook on e3 is hanging. What is the best move? It is rook f to e8. Mills, again, not slowing down at all, leaving the rook hanging here, not recouping any material, and threatening simply rook to e1, and a devastating and a beautiful checkmate. If the bishop captures on e3, then simply queen takes b2 is too much. There is queen takes a1, queen to uh, g2, uh, and queen to e2. All of these squares are huge threats, and there's just no way to defend. In fact, the computer is declaring mate in three. So after rook to e8, the king tries hiding on g1 here. The idea is to be able to run to h2 and also to be able to possibly put the rook on f1 in a moment. So the bigger idea here is to run to h2. Black stops it, bishop to g3, a beautiful move, sealing in the king with a fine mating net. Now, Often when I teach checkmates to younger players, to newer players, one of the things I point out is that it's really not hard to give a check that is only one part of checkmate. The hard part is covering all of the king's escape squares, and the move bishop to g3 here does so perfectly. The ideas of back rank mate are tremendous. Rook e1 is obviously a mating threat, so rook f1 in this position, a desperate move trying to hold on. Rook to e1 threatening to take on f1 and pull the rook down with checkmate, so bishop to c3 covering the e1 square. Now there's not going to be rook e1 mate if you trade on f1. This is your last chance to pause your video and again try to play like a 1500 player play like a brilliant player, and solve this position. Well, the winning move in this position is queen takes b2. Beautiful and decisive. A queen sacrifice with huge threats, unstoppable threats of mate. There's no really good choice here, so white goes ahead and captures the queen in this position, and now we just get rook takes f1, rook takes f1, and rook to e1, check mate. I hope that you've enjoyed this game. If you want to see more of the games I've previously published from the 1970s or the games I am about to publish, then click on the playlist that is sitting right on top of your screen.